Yep, it's like December again. All white. Hey everyone, this is Matt with the AS Alaska. I just want to take a minute to thank you all for watching. We all appreciate the comments and support. We'll be doing a giveaway pretty soon, so be sure to keep an eye out for that and subscribe so you don't miss it. And for anyone who isn't aware, all of what we catch is available on our online store. So if you're interested in wild caught Alaska seafood, check us out at yesalaska.com. Thank you all for watching. Good bait. Huh? I thought that was all gone. The other bait. Gotcha. Yeah, it's not windy at all right now, so that's nice. Get our offloading done. Yeah, so tomorrow, Northwest 50. Yeah, big storm coming. Yeah, should be nice. Nice and photogenic. <laughs> yeah, it's frozen, noisy. Alright guys, so we just got down to the boat and about to fire up and go get our uh, catch off loaded, but I just wanted to show you real quick what's going on here. So um, that's the leak coming off the water pump. If you can see it a drip, drip, dripping. So uh, you can kind of see some staining down here. And that's always an indication that you got a problem with your water pump and that showed up the other day. And uh, because it's running down the block, it's kind of hard to gauge how bad the leak is. So we just have some of this uh, really sticky duct tape and we cleaned off the face of the water pump here and put it on there so we could kind of funnel it over into one spot and see how severe the leak was when we were still out on the grounds and uh, kind of helped us evaluate the severity of the problem. So weird thing is that, you know, this once the engine warms up, that seems to stop, but uh, it's definitely an indication this water pump is on its way out. And so we have a new one that's on its way in. <laughs> so hopefully that'll show up here in the next day or so and we can get this swapped out. And uh, and we don't have to worry about it. Last thing you want is a bad water pump. Yep. Once these things fail, the water just pours out so quick you can't even keep it in the engine. So you're looking at a tow home. So yeah, just wanted to show you that. Probably lost, I don't know, about half a gallon, three quarters of a gallon overnight. But uh, last time we checked it on the way home, we stopped and uh, just let the engine cool off a little bit and opened up the expansion tank and took a look and it hadn't lost any on the way home since we were down down fishing so it seems to just happen when the engine cools off yep it's gonna be raging later huh yeah there's big fat snowflakes right now but i'm glad we're back in town. Me too, that was a perfectly timed trip. You could feel the southerly coming up last night after we got on the side. Yeah. Kind of the Chiniac Rocks was switching around, but coming over from, you'd feel it blown out of house and stuff. Not real hard yet, but tell Even us. here in the harbor when I was in the get its yet, way. It was, water was a little ripply. Not bad, but you could feel it. What say, T? <laughs> Where's my gloves? Oh. There you go. 
so hard to see him. Oh. guys so just pulled up to the processor and getting ready to offload uh, came up a little short on this trip kind of had some challenges on this uh, trip so still not bad though pretty happy got some nice cod to, to go with this delivery too they're in a separate hold with some uh, mixed rockfish over there too so yeah all in all a pretty good trip um, I think we probably have maybe about 3,500 in there, huh? It's hard to say. This yeah. fish hold holds about 5,000 if it's filled up to the to the ceiling, to the top of the combing there. So we're a little bit short of our 5,000 pound trip limit, but like I say, that's okay. Um, you have mechanical issues out on the water, you can't really can't really do anything about it sometimes it's better just to break a trip and come home and be safe than have to deal with trying to get a tow back in or anything like that so yeah i'm glad you guys got home safely when i heard it was i was worried worried mom yeah <laughs> well, i was worried too when i looked in there and saw that water trickling out of the pump so yeah uh I'm glad it slowed down and then stopped and it didn't didn't give us a hard time on the way home. Yeah. Well, it sounds like they're getting some totes ready up there and they'll be dropping a brailer down here in a few minutes. Um, we'll put it in the back there. We'll start loading fish into it. A lot of people always comment on this why we don't just put a, a big net inside here and lift the fish all out at once. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, this fish hold, like I say, it'll hold 5,000 pounds. And so to put a single net in there and lift it out, you're going to crush all the fish against these overhangs right here. Not to mention it pretty much, I don't, I don't know if it exceeds the capacity of the crane, but they don't want to lift 5,000 pounds of fish at once. And uh, the other reason is these go into totes before they're processed and they get iced down and held until they're ready to process them. Those totes hold about 800 pounds of rockfish. So it'd be impossible to, to dump them into a tote, a 5,000 pound big net. So, so that's kind of the reasoning behind that. Um, other people said, you know, you could do multiple nets. It's just more stuff to, to mess around with. Um, you'd have to clean them. It just doesn't make sense. So, 
that's uh, that's why we just put them straight into the hold and then we we pitch them back out. Um, it's not really very time consuming. No, it's like 45 minutes. Yeah, it takes 45 minutes to an hour to uh, to unload five or six thousand pounds for us. So yeah, it's it's not a big deal. We do it all the time. We're used to it. Doesn't look like as much as it did yesterday, Matt. What yeah, happened? it's settled. Yeah, they do, huh? Yeah. Hopefully with less ice in there, it's more than it looks like. Yeah. It looked more like four yesterday, but now it looks more like 3,700. Well, a lot of fish, small fish on this trip. But like you considered two bins full back there. Yeah. And, I mean, there's a little bit, but not much. The first day was pretty windy, so it was hard to look around and get on better grade, bigger fish. So sometimes you just take what you get. We didn't move around as much as we normally would. That's usually what we do when we're looking for fish. We'll do a drift. If they're nice fish, we'll work that area. If they're small, we'll pick up and move. But not much choice in the matter this time. The second, uh, the second day they were nice. Well, that afternoon they were nice. your head on that thing. Yep. Like pay attention because it's gonna bonk you. Don't bust the thing. Yeah, try not to bend over the way your head is like. Come the line, move the line. Keep the line right there. Keep. Rookie. Remember? <laughs> Has it been a while? down. About five to go. Home. <laughs> yeah, almost reach it. There he is. <laughs> I know. Listen up. Who is this big boy? 
Nice one. Let's see, Matt. Let's see, T. One little bit more. A little bit more. Oh. Keep them go. Keep them calm. Not yet, boy. It's not over till it's over. Getting lower in there. So they've gotten way down there, getting into the slushy. Yep, got my foot on the, the bottom of the hold now, so making progress. We're on now. <laughs> Yeah, you missed all the action up there. What happened? Down here. Boys are busy. All right. I'll take a spell. Look out, T. Let me show you how this is done. Dance oh. turn. <laughs> Yeah. I'd suck it out, but there's not much to suck at. Not really too much, huh? Yeah, it doesn't really suck out very good. Mm -hmm. At that level. <laughs> Another brailer, you think, or it'll be two with this one, huh? You think? Yeah. We took the first one too early. First one, what? The first brailer. Fishing game. Oh. Exactly.
Now, huh? Yeah, there's water in that tank over there. So they're just like pumping it out. Wow, there's some big pod.
off to the water dock to get cleaned up, ready for the next run. These ones are dark deskies? Uh, yeah. Dark rockfish. but icy underneath. Alright guys, well I guess that's it. Yeah, we're all cleaned up. Fish are dropped off. The processor, so got a few boat projects to do. Do a little bit of work on the main and we'll yeah. be back in action again. Hopefully next week. Yeah. Hopefully no unforeseen things, but there really shouldn't be. Shouldn't so. be, yeah. Hopefully the part gets here before this storm hits. I don't know if it will. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in, in Homer now. I think the snow's supposed to stop tonight, so... Yeah, yeah. so we're hoping we get our part by Monday or something anyways, and, and we can get our, our re repair made and uh, get back at it. Yeah. Yeah, so until then, thanks yep. for joining us. Thanks guys, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. in and looks like the storm is on us our timing couldn't be much better today get out floated and everything and starting to gust up here it's pretty white out here <laughs> yeah i think we're supposed to have again. what's that it's suddenly winter again yeah it sure is i think we're supposed to get eight to nine inches of snow over the course of the day and night and northwest winds up to 50 I don't know what about gusts but yeah it's gonna get pretty crummy out so glad we're all finished up and the boat's tucked in and we're gonna go get tucked in at home yeah it just started blowing the moment we pulled into our stall so we're pretty happy